Welcome to the Clive Barker Podcast and part 17 of our Dungeons and Dragons game, Jericho Squad 77. Set in the capital city of Isordorex in the Second Dominion, the squad concludes the investigation of Darthur City, face their old enemy Cassius Briar, and the massive Nullian Act 112, or the Hand of the Unbeheld. And now here's Bendley Widget to fill you in on what happened. Bendley here. Last time, our squad decided to ditch the dubious Squad 78 and investigate Darthur City by ourselves. There we met the dragon that looks more like a big spidery worm. It was called the Wings of Hapeximendios. After we killed that thing, we took a rest and headed to Darthur City, where Chernovir woke something up in the ruins of an old cafe, and Jonathan noticed a van headed our way. Will the Squad 78 be there? And what will they do when they get here? Uh, last time, Looking Squad 77 up. thwarted their rival Squad 78 and went to Darthur City first. On their way there, they encountered the dragon, the wings of Hapeximendios. Uh, Squad 78, they had learned, had been infiltrated by their old enemy, Cassius Briar, and recent, uh, recently escaped from hell, and by the Hand of the Unbeheld, which is an aspect of the god Hapeximendios. At Darthur City, uh, Jonathan, the seagull, uh, had flown up and uh, seen that a Volkswagen bus was on its way uh, just at the exact time also that um, that Chertovir was investigating a, an abandoned building and uh, woke up a, a, a couple of righteous were, were popping up out of the ground. Um, and, uh, and that's where we left off. After the destruction of Midian. After the unraveling of the fugue. After the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions. The Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. I have my I have my sword up, but I think I'm gonna use a ranged attack. Okay. I've rolled for initiative. I got a one. <laughs> one plus three equals four. Okay. Oh you my have god. No initiative. No initiative. Oh wait, that's just for him because he's inside there. I'm a librarian, dude. <laughs> I am the fighting librarian. Plus three isn't bad. You just, mm -hmm. It's just a really mm -hmm. bad roll. I'm he just throws a golden apple at him. Yeah, so while we're waiting, everybody else could roll initiative. Uh, Musette rolled a seven. I rolled a okay. 22. And you added your bonus on there? Mm -hmm. I just click initiative. Ralph has a 14. Oh, sorry, then 11. Musette has an 11. Zoe's back. Ralph has a 14? Yeah. Okay. Hey, can you hear us? Yeah, now I can hear you. Woo! Okay. Wow, lots of terrible oh. rolls. Lots of terrible rolls. Okay, <laughs> initiative. You're gonna da -da. die. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what that comment sounded like. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, not just not just you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, Richard got okay. a really good uh, initiative. Oh God, three. Oh my gosh. You got a total Ooh. of three? Three plus two would be a five. Okay. All right, so Richard, you hear yelling. Uh, well, actually, I guess make a perception check. 
we'll see if you hear the yelling. <laughs> My desperate shout for help. Yeah. Because you're distracted right now because you just heard that there was a van coming. You guys kind of uh, went outside to see it for yourselves, to see if you could see it on the road. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a six. Okay, yeah, you don't hear anything. You're just kind of looking at the road there. I'm just, like, picking my nails. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, all right, so next is Ralph. Hi. Uh, make a perception check. Okay. No, we're not anywhere. Perception check. Yeah, to see if you can hear me ask for help. So, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten? Ten is what he got. Ten. Okay. Uh, that's exactly what you needed to get to be able to hear. Um, you hear something. You hear, like, some kind of a muffled shout or something coming from the direction that Chertobir went. Hello. Oh, yeah. So, what do you want to do? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was pretty clear when I when I shouted out. I used some words on it. They, no, I'm just kidding. I know you didn't. You didn't say that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. Also, you're doing the voice again. <laughs> right. Okay. So um, and you actually that makes sense because you're the closest by five feet. So uh, what? Where do you want to go, or what do you want to do, Ralph? I think I heard something. I don't yeah. know what. Are you gonna move? It's probably nothing. No. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I hate you. So, I guess we should go uh, explore. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You, you... So I think if you look at your movement, uh, is it thirty? Can you go thirty feet? Is that about thirty feet? It's each one of those is five. Oh, wow. Yeah, so yeah, six five, squares. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I guess and we should also mention that, yeah, we literally forget everything about this game until we're playing every time. Well, it's been <laughs> two months. Yeah, you, can, you can also use your action to uh, to do double movement. So instead of, like, attacking or whatever, you can move again. So another 30 feet. Uh -oh. uh -huh. You're I'm still over here exploring, guys. If anyone wants to tag along, spoken like a true Texan from Midian. I've already gone sixty. Next is Jonathan's <laughs> turn. Where is he? Oh, he's up there. Okay. Okay, he heard that too. He's headed over. Oh, Rob, can I going? control? Can I control Jonathan? It's funny how these actions take time to roll the dice and stuff. And meanwhile, the two righteous are inside the room, like looking at me, and I'm like, eh. "It's just yeah. like Dragon Ball Z." Yeah, <laughs> charging the attack. <laughs> <laughs> Three episodes later. <laughs> When, when I lived in Japan, that show was on when the kids got out from kindergarten. I was an undergrad, then the campus stopped for people to go to the quad where there was a TV and watch. You can control him now. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, I always thought that was a show for babies. Ah, My awesome. little brother was really into it. I never really got into it, but this late in the game, I have respect for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's definitely a cultural phenomenon. So that's For sure. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to knock it. And now that I'm older, I'm like, it's further along in life than you are. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Musette's turn. Yeah. Okay. Respect your elders. Uh, do you also want me rolling for per perception? Yeah, perception. Yep. Okay. Oh, my God. 10. Oh, actually, that's exactly what you needed. You barely hear uh, some kind of muffled yell. Well, and also, you know what, though? Your friends are also running in the direction, so you don't have to roll because you kind of know, you know, you could follow them. Okay. So I am just going to move to, oops, 
three, four, five. And then let's see. And then I'm going to use my action to move again. Okay. Two, three, four, five. There we go. All right. All right. And now it is the Righteous's turn. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, Lori, I'm glad you were able to get your computer working again. Me too. Okay, and you're able to see the map, too? Yep. Okay, so this one is going to attack Chertovir. Here we go again. It makes a tentacle attack. Well, does a 12 hit? I think with your mage armor, your armor class is higher than uh, that. My armor class is 13. Um, yeah. Yeah, plus so the mage armor... Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't hit. Okay, and one more attack. That's uh, that hits. That's a. So okay, how many how many points do I get? Uh, you take eleven damage. Oh. It's too early and, to uh, be doing tentacle stuff. Okay, forty-five uh, points. Okay, and you have um, and make a you can make either a charisma or a strength saving throw. Oh my god, I got two plus one three for my saving throw. Hell yeah! Sorry. Wait, what, <laughs> what was that? Did... My strength saving oh, throw oh, okay. ended up being two plus one, three. Okay, so you failed. You've been grappled. Um, uh, and it starts dragging you out the door. And then this so, guy is going to move ten feet. Uh, Ryan, just one thing. That righteous is going to a window. I can't get out through the window. Oh, I thought that was the door. He went to this one. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Yeah. The monster could probably just rip go, through that window. He though. can only go ten feet. He hasn't. He hasn't made it out the door yet. So other righteous pop up all over the place. Don't I add. think the real villain here, I think, <laughs> is, is, is is the Danhauser family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Trying to kill us. He's a he's a well, sadist. You, you went in this building by yourself. <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought that they were going to come after me. I mean, we're a team. The VW heading on to us right now as well. We okay. might want to try to turn this into our advantage instead of trying to fight these guys right out. Oh. Yeah, like Jack the VW bus. <laughs> <laughs> Make them fight them, and then, yeah, we take the VW bus. <laughs> okay, this exactly. This one's going to attack Musette. Okay. Oh, here we are. And it hits uh, eight damage to Musette. Ah! And it attacks one more time and it misses. Eight damage. And actually, Copy that was that. a critical miss. Got a one. The next time you attack it, Musette, you can, if you get any re ones and twos in your damage roll, you can re-roll those. Copy that. Okay. Yeah because he's kind of made himself more vulnerable. And this one is going to kind of float up in the air a little bit to try to get to Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan's up like 15 feet, though, so he doesn't quite make it that high. They can only move 10 feet. All right, and this one's going to attack Bentley. Six damage. Now it's Bentley's turn. Okay, he pulls out his uh, long sword. And it's going to attack, make two attacks against this one that's in front of you. He hits both times. Is that 29 damage? Well, he kills it anyway. Ew. Yeah. Wow. How much did you hit it with damage wise? 29. You hit it with 29 Whoa. damage. Yeah. Bentley's oh, pretty Bentley. strong. And he is going to move. And Zoe's turn. Okay, I'm going to do um, this one that's in front of Jonathan. I'm going to do second level guiding bolt. Okay, so 20 sided die. I'm rolling, and I got 11 plus 7 is 18. That totally hits. <laughs> okay. Yes. Then, yeah, roll the and, and then damage is 5d6. Six, so yeah, five so times. Five, six, seven, okay, three. 
plus six is nine, plus three is 12, plus five is 17, plus six is 23. Nice. I can do it old school. <laughs> it's Turtleveer's turn. Uh, All you right. just can't, you can't move That's until you wrong. get out of the grapple zone. No, so you can choose to attack it or you can choose to, to uh, try to make the save again to get out of it. Uh, I'll do charisma check because the modifier is a little bigger than my strength check, okay. the saving throw. Yeah. So charisma, oh, for God's sake, a one plus two equals three. Uh, yeah. I, I don't, these I rolls don't are terrible. I don't trust virtual well, dice. Well, it's the damage for this specific thing. Okay, so yeah, you <laughs> are stuck in you're you're stuck in its grasp. Oh, I just I just wasted my turn for that. Okay, Richard, okay. it's your turn. So well, then I'm gonna shoot him. The righteous. I want to shoot righteous number one. Yeah, and so he's uh, he's thirty feet in front of you and about ten feet up. Plus five. I rolled so you two. Rolled a two? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, you got one more shot. Oh my goodness! I'm just like pop, pop. I need to go Nothing. grab actual dice. Yeah, I think I might do the same. This, so this what, dice what, is. What, uh, what was your roll with the other one? I rolled a one and I rolled a two. Oh okay. Oh, a one is a is a critical failure. So we get to go to the critical failure chart. <laughs> What? Get to go to the critical failure chart. Yeah. Hey, your gun jams. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it'll take a, an action to uh, to uh, unjam, unjam it. it. Yeah. Ralph's turn. All right. Hey, okay, Ralph is right here. Okay, so I'm gonna move five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. That puts him right there by me. Ralph's gonna run over here. Oh, look, there's a chota beer. You look like you need help, asshole. So I'm gonna go ahead and. You're uh, mad at him for, for being hurt? Or... <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna Eldridge Blast this guy. Oh, okay. That you... that has a uh, chota beer. Okay, he, he, so chota beer is a. Uh, he... Don't Eldridge Blast me, bro. Yeah, well, hold on. <laughs> Uh, Chertovir is in the wrong place. It was dragging him out the door, and he hasn't made it out the door yet, so I don't know why Chertovir oh, is in oh. front of him. Well, you asked me to move him, and I moved him, and you saw me move him. Let me go ahead and move him back inside yeah, the door, okay? But, yeah, there. but I said he was dragging you. Okay, there. How does that yeah. look? Yep, that's good. Okay, so yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna Eldritch Blast him. So you'll want to get to at an angle where you can see him in the doorway there. Yeah, I, this is a pretty good angle. Okay. All right. Uh, roll to hit. Fifteen. I don't know if that hits. Uh, two. That's uh, the two beams. One d ten plus three damage. You can actually you can you can direct the two d beams at two different targets if you want to, or you can hit, hit do them both on the same guy. Uh, let's do them both on the same guy. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you you one of them hits, and you got to roll for the other one. Or whatever you got. Eight. Is what you got okay. there. So eight damage. That's for one of them, right? Yeah. Now I roll for the second one. Yeah. Did Did you roll the hit on the second one? So okay. it's a sixteen. Okay. Thank you, Rob. Five, eight. Plus the three. All right. Okay. He, that one is dead. Sweet. Yep. Okay, and Jonathan is going to fly up even higher. He's going to cast Firebolt on the, the Righteous that's chasing after him. Natural 20. So he got a critical hit. Way to go, Jonathan, who's not here. Well, he kills it anyway. And it's uh, Musette's turn. Okay, well, my original plan is not a good plan currently. Sorry. Oh, uh, you don't want to set fire to Bentley? Uh, I wasn't going to set fire to them. Oh, okay. I will uh, throw acid splash at number two. Dexterity fourteen. He got a fifteen, so he passed. It looks like zero damage. Okay, yeah, but he could attack you. He could do an attack of opportunity for if you try to move out of his range. Uh, I'm gonna move anyway. Okay. Four. That's probably fine. 
And uh, now it's the Righteousness' turn again. This one's going to attack Bentley. Uh, both attacks missed. And terrible roll. This one is going to go towards Musette and attack Musette. Does a 16 hit? Okay, yeah, well, she got she got hit twice. And what's so the damage? Take, uh, 19 damage. Ah! And make a either a charisma or a strength saving throw. Oh, um, I got 15. Total? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you 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 got out of it. It didn't. It wasn't able to grapple you. You use okay. the power of your mind. We got this one over here is coming after Ralph. It's gonna make two attacks. Ralph, is your your armor is activated, right? Yes. Okay, so for the first one, we'll do with disadvantage. Sixteen. Shit. This is sixteen hit. So you get six damage. I'm going to do a reaction, use my reaction to get me a Misty Escape. And I'm going to just disappear and fly off 60 feet away. 45, 50, 55, 60. It's pretty far and I got this tree in my way. What's this thing around the tree, a fence? Yeah. Okay, so I can see this. It, it looks like an old dead garden. Yeah, so boom. I'm all the way over there. Joe DeVere, you're on your own. So I got away from that guy. Yeah. And uh, and I have he, to... he does a second attack. He just flails in the air as you're disappearing. <laughs> I got away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, number eight. He's really far. Okay. He is going to move 10 feet. There we go. Bentley's turn. Twenty-five. He's gonna hack up this one that's attacking Musette. That. That's a hit, and sixteen. He did kill it. So number three is dead, and he can move five more feet. And he's got nobody to attack with his second attack, so he's just gonna stand right on top. Okay, that's Bentley's turn. He says, "I hate these things." <laughs> Zoe is after Bentley. Okay, I don't think I'm anywhere that I can do any attacks without hitting somebody else and everything, yeah, everything in my you, way. You, you, you can move, though. Yeah, that's all I'm going to be able to do. All right, so... You can double move, too, if you want to use your action to, to move again. So, I, since I get 30 feet, I get 60 feet, then? Yeah. Okay. All right, so... One, two... I hope I'm seeing this right because my screen's so small. Three. Oh, yeah. Four, five, six. Okay, so that's 30. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's where I'm supposed to be. Is that 120? My screen's so small, I can barely see it. Oh, you went 60 feet? I think so. <laughs> All right, yep, looks good. Okay. Okay, uh, Chertovir, it's your turn. And you, uh, you're un you've untangled yourself from this dead, uh, dead, um, your uh, dead righteous that uh, just got Eldritch blasted. And... Awesome, awesome. Th thanks for the assist, Ralph. Um, so you can see there's one right out the door in front of you. Yeah, number four. So here's what I'm gonna do for number four. I am going to cast a spell. Uh, I'm going to do a, a Numa bullet attack. Okay. A third level spell, I think. Wait, no, I have a fourth level Numa attack. So I'm going to cast that, and then let's see. I'm going to roll to hit. 16 plus 6 equals 22. Okay. okay. I guess I hit him. Yeah, that okay. hits. 4d10. You don't need that. You, if, if you want to back off on that, you don't need to do uh, fourth level on that. Sure to hear because that that's a um, it, their their hit points aren't that high. It, you know, you could do 
Um, but that's up to you. I, I mean, I, you I already did it. I, I did oh, okay. fourth level because I wanted to finish him okay. off. Roll, roll three more d10s. Yeah. Nine plus 26. Uh, it, it turns 20, into a, a pink mist. Ah! <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I do my Eurythmic Librarian War Cry. Yeah, yeah, you put all of your rage into that one. Return, return yeah. the books on time or you will be fined. <laughs> Yeah, okay, Richard, it's your turn. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Well, Richard is going to move over here by... Uh, and Ralph will be next. By Ralph. Because don't we have uh, number eight still over there? Yeah. And we still have those guys rolling up on us, so I want to just use my turn to move 60 feet, I guess. Okay. Gotcha. I see you there. Okay. All oh, right, and then I just uh, yell over it to uh, at old dude. I'm like, man, this is crazy. All right, Ralph, it's your turn. Okay, there's one over here, far, far away. Yeah, that's I the only, only one left, as far as I can tell. It looks like there's one in the building still, down where uh, Chodavir is. Number six is still alive. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, Eldritch Blast always seems to work. That okay, you know, 120 you got, feet. You got and you got two of those. Yeah, right now I have the two blasts. So I'm gonna go ahead yeah. and blast number eight plus six. Spell. Okay, six plus six. That hits 15. Yeah, right. Yeah, the first beam I rolled a 17. So you both of them hit. So yeah, you can roll damage on them. The first one. I rolled a seven, eight, nine. So it's ten on the first beam. Okay. The second beam is seven. Okay, that one is dead. Cool. I did it. Uh, next is Jonathan. He doesn't know that there's one inside of the building. He can't tell from where he's at. Uh, he's just going to kind of fly. Okay. And Musette. And it doesn't look like there's any windows or anything for us, for me to be able to see to, that there's yeah. another one, right? You don't even know that one's there. Yeah. I think I will just move so I can see better. Okay. Move here. That was six. I already recounted that. So I will. Yeah, do a healing word on myself. I just get a 1d4 plus 3. I get 4 total. Okay. All right, you give yourself 4 points. Okay, thank you. I'm okay. done. This righteous moves towards uh, Chertovir, but he can only go 10 feet, so that's where he's at. Next is Bentley's turn. Okay, he goes there, and he's going to look around. He doesn't see anything. Uh, and then Zoe, and Chertovir will be next after Zoe. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a perception check and um, just kind of keep an ear out to see if I hear anything, because we've already taken out seven, yeah. and that that's quite a few, but uh, nevertheless, uh, let's see, perception, 21. Okay, uh, you did uh, you did hear some sort of rattling and and uh, and it sounded like a, a door creaking open in the south side of the building there. Okay, so should we uh, get the troops together and try to find out what that noise was, or what are we wanting to do? Are we needing to heal? Because I can heal somebody. I know what that noise is because I'm right inside that building. Yeah. Well, well, tell us then. <laughs> I'm waiting for my turn. Yeah, so, okay. so uh, Zoe, what do you want to do? Um, I'm going to move over by the door because I okay. heard something. I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna and, investigate. And uh, Chertovir is kind of in the door, but you could squeeze past him if you need to. Well, if you can move that far. Uh, I yeah. will. I can just step to the side here. Well, you can on your turn. Okay, my turn. But yeah, she can okay. squeeze past you. You can go through uh, a friendly space. I'm not that fat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 
Hey guys, there's another one in here. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and try the automatic pistol. Okay. Since I'm right there. All right, roll to hit. Uh, I'm rolling to hit. Okay. 21. 21 to hit, and the... Yeah, well, at this range, it better. Yeah. <laughs> 11. Oh, okay. It is reeling, but it's not dead. Okay. Come on, guys. Now it's Turdovir's turn. All right. Okay, so I am going to... I am turning... Uh, so I'm turned around so I can see him. I'm going to shoot... Let me see. What spell do I want to use? Uh, magic Missile? Okay. Let me see. You don't have to roll to hit on Magic Missile. They automatically hit. You just roll damage. So I'm going to roll for damage. 1d4 plus 1. Come on. Daddy needs a new pair of shoes. 3 plus 1, 4. Yeah, it is dead. It, uh, it just hey. kind of flops down on the ground. Nice. Okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought. All right. Okay, uh, they are all dead. Um, How's everybody? I can't hear you. I'm so far away. Oh yeah, you're so far away, right? You okay, Zoe? Well, I'm right. I'm right here, and I'm fine. I didn't get awesome. hit at all. <laughs> I got tentacle marks all over me, and my robe is kind of dirty, and I got hit, so I'm kind of bleeding a little bit. Do you need me to heal you? Hey, that would be great. Thanks. Bentley says I'm I'm a little hurt, but I'm okay. Richard has an inflated sense of ego right now because everything happens so quickly. He believes that he took down at least two or three or four of them. <laughs> 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 He's like puffing up, puffing up his chest and stuff. You're welcome. <laughs> All, right. All in a day's work. <sighs> Blows out the smoke out of the tip of his pistols. That's yeah. jammed. You did such a so, great job, Richard. Could have so, done without you. <laughs> Churdovir doesn't know about the Volkswagen bus that's coming because he wasn't around when Jonathan told everybody about it. Right, so I'm like, okay, looks like looks like this city is kind of a... Looks like this is a, a, a dead end and a trap. Um, can I look around... Can I Take look, a look around, around the building and see if I can find, or can I examine the the dead righteous and see what uh, if I can find anything useful? Uh, yeah, yeah. We guess make an investigation check. All right, investigation. What are what are you looking for? Like stuff on its body, or? Um. Yeah, I'm looking around the room to see if there's anything we can use. Oh, okay. All right, so investigation. Um, there. It rolled an 18 plus 6, 24. Wow. Um, things that you can use for like fighting, or what are you what are you looking for? I guess I'm looking for um, clues. Okay, I'm looking for clues about what might have happened to the people in this city. Like, what do I see inside the building? Is there any? Did they leave in a rush? Do I see anything? Oh, Is yeah. it just? It it uh, it looks like. There was a lot of fighting in the building. I mean, the, the hmm. furniture was kind of smashed and overturned. And, Looks that and, way. Uh, yeah. Um, and there is some blood and stuff on the walls. Uh, no bodies? No bodies. All right. So, guys, it looks Except like... Except for the, the righteous. Yeah. So, it looks like... Uh, I don't see any bodies around here. It looks like everybody in the city there got taken or they ran away um i'm gonna I, stop the chair here okay okay I'm, I'm gonna get out of the building and okay. and see so okay so what else do i see in this um i see the garden right there's a garden and then yeah, yeah a, fenced, right. a fenced garden how do we get or out of this place yeah, and it's got get a little arch Everything's dead in there. I can't seem to get out of the building. Because you closed the door. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. I don't know how yeah. doors work. There you go. All yeah, right, I'm going to go up like here. Smart, smart librarian wizard dude. 
It's all, it's all pretend. It's all pretend. What's Jodavir's uh, arch enemy? Doors. I'm like, okay, guys, you okay? Um, is everybody fine? I'm alive. Yeah. Well, um, so who knows about uh, this Volkswagen rolling up on us right hey, now? Everybody except Jodavir and uh, yeah. and well, uh, Jonathan says, hey, don't we want to? You know, what are we gonna do about this car coming up? How oh far God. away are they, and how how soon do you think until they get here? Uh, probably I think he said just ten a minutes. Of minutes now. Yeah. Well, look. So, since they're showing up and we're in this little area, I do have a spell, and I can contribute in that way. And my spell is that I have uh, glasses of true sight. I have uh, for the duration. The creature has true sight. Notice the secret doors hidden by magic and can see into the ethereal plane. The spell gives a willing creature you touch the ability to see things as they actually are. If we're suspecting this guy to be showing up as possibly um, Cassius Briar, having the true sight might put some sort of uh, ability to see that to make sure, you know, if they're trying to throw any sort of spells or any curveballs towards us, I'll be able to see that coming. Well, I don't know. Uh, it lasts for an hour. Do you guys think I should rock these glasses? Help us take a look around here real quick. Do you think it would be yes. beneficial at all? Yeah, and about yeah. that car, do you guys think it might be the other squad that's that's coming over that was following us? Most possibly. Probably. Mm. Expect the worst. Yeah, I guess, I guess it would be a good idea because... Well, hang on. Do I know that one of the other guys is actually, like... So there's a, a Nullianak in the other squad, right? Yep. And yeah, there's and, a guy... He's the, he's the hand of the unbeheld, so he's, he's the hand of the un... effect of right. some Indios. And, and there was a guy who looks like a Rethemek, but is really Cassius Briar, right? Yes. And I yeah, know yeah. that. Hellraiser style. You know, okay. He's, he's wearing he's, skin. He's wearing skin. So... Yeah. skin. And we all know that. We yes. saw it in the... Men in black yeah, style. Symbol. Yeah. So I think it'll be a good idea for him to have those glasses. I think it'll be a good idea for you to rock those glasses, Richard, uh, because, you know, that way you might, we won't be prey to like what illusions they have. Um, you know, they're using illusions to probably, I don't know if the other team is in on the scam or if they don't know and they think that uh, the other guy is still their buddy, but it's actually Cassius Breyer. So I think that would be a good idea to have those glasses. But now the matter is, do we do we get out of the city or do we hide and and let them come into the city and see what they do? What do you guys think, uh, Richard, Zoe, Musette, Ralph? Should we should we hide that that truck is rolling up here, barreling down on us right now? What should we do? Should we just straight up confront? Like, hey, <laughs> we said we'd meet here, right? Clear hey, there's the way more buildings. For yeah, it looks like we might have cleared the city, so I, um, I'm wondering if we should find a place to hide. Yeah. Okay. Hide somewhere. Maybe on a roof. Does like anybody have any lying person? Some traps. We don't really want them to get here, though, so maybe we should run out front and prevent them from entering. We can just go run up front and blow them up that way. It looks like there's only one entrance and Is it a gate? to the city. Is that it? It's a gate? Yeah. Is yeah, it a exactly. gate that's thick that we can stand on? Uh, it's an open sort of a archway. It's not really like closable. Oh, what okay, if we okay. attack the vehicle so that way we minimize the the area of effect? So that way we we attack the vehicle and essentially blow it up and blow everybody in there to smithereens. Well, but, but we don't know if everyone spot. is an enemy. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. I think what we should do is we should strategically position ourselves all around uh, mm. the gate when it comes in. So like there's a building immediately to the right and the left and then we have that garden. So if we oh, kind yeah. of fan out around there, I have this thing called a zone of truth that I can actually probably, yeah, it looks like I can put it at the entrance. So, Zone of Truth is a magical zone that guards against de deception in a 15-foot radius sphere centered on a point of your choice within range. Until the spell ends, a creature from that, that enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there must make a charisma saving throw. What's the duration on that? Um, duration, 10 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're so, gonna like, be when here. they first. 
in, a, in like a minute and a half. So I, so I like we, that idea. We pop that, they roll inside, and then everybody jumps out. Like, Get out of so, the vehicle now. So how ben, about how ben about we go into? Me. Go ahead. I, I was just going to suggest what Kalina was saying was. We got these these houses here next to the gate. What if we go into those houses and just kind of hide in there and see what they do when they enter the zone of truth? And then we can flank them on both sides. Yeah, basically and that. This is good plan. Okay, uh, if that's what you guys want to do, I'm going to do that. And he's going to, he kind of got, goes behind this window and he smashes uh -huh. it and he's pointing his gun through the window. <laughs> So we just assume they're going to pull up and stop right before we get to that so-called garden? Or are they going to pull up outside the gate? Can well, we driving, run over? They're driving from the First Dominion towards, you know, so it's the opposite direction that you came from, towards Darthur City. And that's all you know right now. You don't know where. Okay, so to can we run, can I run to those houses and get on like, like this yeah. house over here? Like yeah, open the door, do that. get in there. Yes, I'm going to be in this building next to it. Looks like Bentley. Or same building, I guess. Okay, can I hide? Oh, there we go. I'm going to hide in between these two buildings because I still got to be close enough to cast this oh, yeah. thing. Uh, this is you can move in through Richard buildings. and Bentley. So, can I hide by the tree? So, when music creates that 15 foot radius zone of truth. Anybody who goes in there has to make a charisma saving throw, and if they fail, they can't tell a lie. Is that right? A uh, creature can't speak a deliberate lie while in the radius. Yes, that's a sorry. Gr that's a great chance for us to expose Cassius and see what the other um, Jericho squad's gonna do when they find out he's not their buddy. Okay, Ralph's stuck. I'm gonna hide in the tree. Ralph climbed up in the tree. Okay, so everybody's kind of situated where they want to be? Yeah, um, can I go ahead and uh, cast this now? Oh, the zone of truth. Yeah. Zone yeah, of truth. Okay, I it's uh I am hitting cast, and uh, it looks like since it's the um, it's not a cube, it's a sphere. It's a sphere of 15 feet, so I guess it just needs to take up at least three of these little um, spaces right here by the gate. Yeah. Yeah, um, it, yeah, it, it's a it's a sphere too. So I assume right. that it also goes up and around. Yeah, closest to us on the other side of this. Whatever. So they this they is. have to go in it if Pink they come thing. through there. Right, they have to go through it. Do they have to reside in it to keep telling the truth, or is it they just pass through it and then they're afflicted with it? I um, think it, I think if they step out of it, they're not in the zone anymore. Yeah, it says a uh, creature if... that enters the spell's area for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there must what make if... that charisma saving throw. Pardon me. What if uh, you don't cast it until they roll in here? Because what if you just cast it at the front and they roll right through it and then stop like 10 feet past it? That's a good point. Ooh. That is There's a, a lot of nine foot squares right there that they can control. Is... Mm -hmm. Is the gate big enough for the Volkswagen bus to go through? Oh, excuse me. Not really. Okay. So they have so... to walk in no matter what. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. So I Does think anybody can... have like a like a stasis spell, something that would make them? I, I have. A, I can bring up a, a oh, monster or creature. Earth and grasp. Yeah. Or, yeah. Doesn't somebody have like a hut or like a? Like protection, I guess that's protection more that somebody has. Where well, the, oh, the protection like, bubble, they can get out of it. They just can't go in inside it. Hmm. So if I they keep you're... walking, they'll just walk out of that thing. Um, I, think. I think Musette has that, what you're talking about, Richard. I had a tiny hut. No, it was you. It was Joe DeVere with the tiny hut. She might have it too, but I do have a tiny hut, which a 10-foot radius immobile dome of force. But um, I think... People can get out of it; they just can't go inside it. So I, I don't, I don't know that it would keep them inside that dome. All right, so let's try to think of this. So they're going to roll in here. We're going to slap them with the true spell. We're all going to jump out and be like, "What are your intentions? And do you know this guy is freaking Cassius Pryor?" Ryan, do you know if the tiny hut, if I cast it on top of someone? Can they walk out of it? I don't 
don't think you can cast it on somebody. I think okay, you, it's yeah, self. Your, it's your self. Friends, ten feet. Yeah, your yeah. friends can go inside of it, but yeah. yeah, I cast on myself, and it surrounds me by ten feet. Okay, yeah. I don't want to be stuck in a. It's it's meant for being able to to, to camp at sleep night and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I do have a spell that might work. I would. I had to look it up to see whether or not it might. I, I'm still not convinced it would. But would spirit guardians work? Because that's like a 15 foot radius. And they and, that's and it's it, around you, so you would have to be. In the oh, room. okay. I was gonna say if they can keep them, you know, cordoned off into that 15 foot area. That's a good idea. Know. The one that we put on one of our vehicles oh, when yeah. we traveled here. That just hurts people. I mean, that's kind of like Musette has cloud of daggers. Yeah. Oh, I got uh, well, well, well. black tentacles, but they also uh, appear 20 foot square of tentacles, but they start bludgeoning whoever's inside it. So. Tell us the truth now. Just, All right, so just what a are thought. You guys do? We might be overthinking it. I mean, if we yell out at them, they might stop. I don't know. Or they might just scatter in different directions. Uh, so that's, I don't know. What if we have just like one lone guy right in the middle and they all roll up and they try to pull their guns on me? And then they're like, hey, what are you doing here? Then boom, then we come from the outside. Everybody else is like, ha ha ha, double ambush. They, yeah, Richard, they got a million act. It's we'd kind of be using you as live bait, and they do have a million act. So if they choose to attack you, you're kind of screwed. You can put that little thing on you, and you can be the bait. That's true. That is true. Okay. What, what little thing? The tiny hut. Oh. I mean, I I can. They can't go into the tiny hut, right? Right. Are these guys so beefed that they would not be taking our, like, ambush threat seriously? They'd be like, ha, shoot me with your stupid pistol. I'm an alien. I think, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do what Richard is saying. I'm going to go over here, okay? And do you see me? I'm going to cast Tiny Hut on myself. Can I do that? Well, you don't cast it on yourself. You just put it down and you can go inside of it. Right, right. So let me see. Where's the tiny hut? You're like Kassoon right now. Boom. <laughs> yeah. I think I got... I think I got the tiny hut. There we go. I've cast. I've got a 10 feet dome around me that nobody else can come in. And I guess I can confront them. And if I'm standing right there, I, I guess they're not going to like run past me. They're going to be like, you know, trying to interrogate so wait, me or something. I don't... You put so... up what, so you, are you inside of the hut or outside of the hut? I am inside of the hut, so How can you they can't attack them me. If you're if you're in the hut, I can talk through the hut, can't I? No, I can't. I mean, they can't see you. You're inside of a little magical protective hut thing. Oh, the dome is opaque from the outside, but it is transparent on the inside. Ah, oh, man. Okay. Um. Darn it. Okay, so that that that's not. That's not what I was thinking. I was thinking, like, put a sign on the outside of it that says Kissing Boo 25 GP. We don't have GP in this game. I'm not kissing anybody. <laughs> okay. Good um, boundings. All right. How about we just take our places, place the thing over there in front of the gate, and then when they come in, I'll just yell out at them and see what they do. Okay. No, or uh, are, are you guys still doing the zone of truth? If yeah. we need to, I would say, we, let's use it at a whim, because I do have the true sight glasses. We can actually just ask them straight up, and if they start lying, bam, cast it. Okay, so don't cast it. I mean, I can cause them fear from way back here. I can intimidate them individually. Okay, so I guess I'm going to get out from the front of the thing before they arrive. Either way, it sounds Muzet, like... Muzet, huh? it's up to you if you want to cast that or not. It's a, I mean, You're getting different people saying different things. I'm just here. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, before we go... Yeah, That's cool. Know. We're just strategizing. Yeah. You know? It looks like we're all taking places to hide, so... And to cause... And to interrogate them from afar. Yeah. Can I That's... unjam my gun before they get here? Oh, yeah, you had time to unjam your gun. 
Okay. What's that little red thing on there? Um, that might mean that your gun is jammed? Oh, that's probably know. my sight glasses. That's my ruby. Oh, sorry. yeah. Rose-colored glasses. All right, so you guys want French. to s let them come in and see what happens, and then we can confront them. And then you got your glasses. Uh, Musette, you have your zone of truth that you can cast on them. Um, well, I, I already casted it. Do we have communication oh, okay. devices? All right, so, then, Rob, can you put the zone of truth in front of the gate then? So that's what I was saying. Do I need to, you know, unblock, uncheck my little my little slot here? Because it sounds now like I need to do it later. I personally would prefer to just have it on right now. Yeah. All right, okay. then let's put it okay. down. I don't have to do the extra step later. Let's put it down. Because I am lazy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Zone of truth. I used to remember there were these vines called cheese of truth, where a guy would slap a, a slice of Swiss cheese on a book and then read the, the words in the holes. That was funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, that sounds familiar. Cheese of okay. truth. Bow. Right on the book. <laughs> Uh, you are, um, especially, um, Chertovir, since you're the closest, you, you do hear the, um, the, the Volkswagen pull up and, and stop. Okay. Uh, car doors open. Do you have your door open? Can you see through there or is it? Yeah, my door is open. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, characters start to, um, Start to come in through the uh, through the gate. All right. So the first one through is uh, a character that um, that Ralph and Zoe would recognize. Renfrew. Uh, he's a, um, a frog type person, archer, and Jennifer will be playing him. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Hi. And I do have a sidekick helper, just so you know. My son. <laughs> uh, I want to know uh, how they're going to react. Well, they're they're a little perturbed at us, like not providing him with the truck to get here and all that. Right. They wanted they're, to meet us at our station. They're going to be pretty pissed, I guess. So, regardless of whether or not they're aligned with uh, Cassius and his intent, they're already going to be displeased with the performance of our crew here. Yeah, they're going to be like, what the hell, man? What happened? You guys are you guys are in subordination. You're out AWOL. Yeah, because we're kind of AWOL right now. Mm. Well, they're not your bosses. Yeah, but they, they, they play by the same rules and use the same rule book as us. It's just like any co-workers. They're going to point that shit out for sure. We taking notes. You got a point. I mean, they could but, just tattle. Yeah, but I mean, we do have important information about two of the people in their squad that are not who they think they are. So let's. Who, who is our bosses, though? That's that's a good question. I don't know that I know the backstory of the Jericho squad because I just joined this like a few weeks ago, supposedly. You've met one of your bosses. Oh, was it Huzzah? No. Well, no. She's a uh, she's in charge of the. Um, she's not in the Jericho. She's a. She's the uh, one of the representatives of the. No, the the the, the investigator. Please tell me it wasn't Ryan. that bug. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, do we work for the Tabula Rasa? Mm, no. <laughs> I hope not. I'm I'm no. just glad it's not the bug that we killed or left behind the, or the whatever. The Tabula Rasa <laughs> is gone. We faced death so many times and we're just now deciding to have this conversation. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Maybe and we we're all, follow this we're up. all having this conversation from different parts of the city. As, <laughs> as they come in through the gate, uh, you see um, 112, uh, a Nolian act that's taller than than any other Nolian act you've ever seen. It's, uh, uh, you recognize it as probably the, the hand of the unbeheld. Uh, and this is a, a creature that you've met before, but it was disguised as a human. It doesn't seem to be bothering to disguise itself now. Mm -hmm. uh, you see uh, Pageant Storm is a, uh, a, a kind of a, a it's an Ethak, which Churduvir would recognize as a, a dwarf a warrior like creature. Yeah. yeah, with gray skin and scars the on, big her, head. on her head. Yeah, the big head. The head is um, like almost as big as a torso. Yeah. Yeah. 
and Oskalok is a um, uh, your Edemek. And you know, you know from seeing him through the Boston Boston Bowl and from Jonathan spying on them in the Fourth Dominion that Oskalok is really uh, is really Cassius, Cassius. Briar uh, wearing Oskalok's skin. Yeah, it, he's pulling on his little ponytail, trying to stretch his skin. He's like, <laughs> and, and I'm Renfrew, in black. Uh, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. And uh, Renfro used to be in uh, the Midian Squad Forty Two with. Uh, but uh, you thought Renfrew was dead uh, when the when the Sons of the Free um, attacked it, but uh, Renfrew must have survived and been reassigned to Squad uh, 78. So Ralph and Musette know Renfrew? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Ralph and Musette, you would know that Renfrew um, was a pretty, you know, even-handed, uh, kind-hearted type person. Okay. Uh, and and then another a really strange one and this to everybody else he just looks like a a, a regular human he's got kind of yellowy eyes and stuff but he looks like a regular human but with the glasses uh to richard he looks like a, a tiger he looks like a, a a tiger standing up on two legs um what? yeah Weird. And and Ralph, uh, you you would remember that uh, when you um, the the person who master who was the in charge of your circus that you were in, uh, he looked like this to you at one time. The ringleader, uh, really briefly, when he tried to drag you into hell with him. Which one is this guy here in these in this cluster? Uh, Torabah. Yeah, he, he goes by Terrence in, in oh, Squad yeah. Seventy Eight. <laughs> and he, he it's the yellow eyes I see, right? Yeah. Yep. Like, and uh, and Richard sees him for what he really is. He's a he's a, a devil. He's a tiger. He's shaped like a tiger. It's a tiger lady. All right. So um so Renfrew, you you step inside and you don't see anyone. Uh, I guess make a perception check. Perception. 9. Okay. Yeah. Um, not so good. You don't see anyone around, uh, but uh, 112. The uh, 112, you're not. You you feel pretty suspicious of this character, like it has its own motives, and you don't know how it got itself into Squad 78. But uh, you're uneasy with it. Um, but it says they are hiding in the buildings. I kind of duck down a little bit and like back away from the door. Okay. There's no okay. way Pierce, she's like keeping his eyes on these people from oh, the trees. And, uh, and you guys are, by the way, you're standing in a zone of truth. So Renfrew, make a, is it, it's a wisdom saving throw, right? Uh, sorry. It is a charisma saving throw. Okay, saving. 14. Okay. Okay. Charisma. charisma. So Oskalok made it. So saving throw. Nope, eleven. Okay. So you have to tell the truth. Okay, so Oskalok, Oskalok uh, passed the charisma saving throw. Uh, and, so he can lie. And pageant storm uh, failed. And. Huh. Yeah, it was below okay. Ken Lai. Mm. And uh, natural 20 for, for 112. And, Darn it. Uh, Damn. I'm already scared of this 112. Yeah. And, sh- and yeah. you guys also get the sense, or Richard, you get the sense that this, uh, this that Squad 78 doesn't know what Toraba is, the, the tiger creature. Benson, are you seeing this? Bentley, sorry, not Benson. Bentley, are you seeing this? There's a tiger out there. That old 80s sitcom. I was thinking of the regular show. Benson. Oh, oh yeah. You're the fired. lollipop guy. Yeah. Um, Benson, that guy in the middle. Or I just did it again. Bentley, whatever your name is, Big Bear. Do you see this? There's a freaking tiger out there. You can't hear me. What are you talking about? Well, I There's see no the tiger. 
one closest to the door. It's weird looking. It might be these glasses, but he looks like a tiger. Uh, which one? The frog man or the Nolanac nope. or nope. or the guy with the yellow eyes or the... Or uh, the I don't see no guy with yellow eyes. Oh, he, he the, looks like a tiger to you? He's in the back. He just looks weird. He's shimmering and looks like a tiger. I can't tell. It might, it's weird okay, to you. What do you want me to do? I don't know what to say. What do you want me to do about it? I don't know. What do you think we should do right now, man? I'm getting antsy here. I just feel like running out and talking to him. <sighs> Calling him out. That 112 guy looked right at me. <laughs> he knows I'm here. Yeah, I just and at know this it. point, at this point, uh, he says, "Come out, Squad 77." Oh darn it! Okay, ah. okay, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna say, "Hey, 78, hey, stop right there. You guys have members in your squad who are not who they seem." Ralph stays in the tree and lets his uh, Darren's tentacle kind of fall out and hang there, just waiting. And I, and I came out like this. Like I'm not holding move. my sword. I'm okay. just saying, you know, guys, okay. stop, you know. All right. Some of you, some of the members in your squad are not who they seem. Uh, make a persuasion check. All right. I got 16 plus 2, 18. Ooh. Okay, uh, so Renfrew, um, it's this kind of confirms the suspicions, some suspicions that you had about this group, um, especially uh, 112. I mean, he, he, it's like you, you, he, it seems like it doesn't really care about uh, about goals of the Jericho Squad, and it seems to have some other kind of, I, um, some other kind of agenda that you don't really know. Um, so okay. you're 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 sort of compelled. You feel like you probably this is something you should probably listen to. Okay. So what are you talking about? Well, so for starters, you guys are standing right next to a Nullianak. Uh He's the hand of Apexamendios, and the other guy that's with you, the Erethemek. He's not a Erethemek at all. He's look closer. He is. He's one of our enemies. He's the guy who tried to destroy our squad in the past. He is Cassius Breyer. I saw this in my Boston Bowl. It's got to be true. <laughs> and like, how do you know this? <laughs> I step up and I say, I can see it. And that guy behind you isn't who he says he is either. This guy is like uh, some sort of beast. He looks like a tiger. I can see it uh, all. I've got a true sight. You you look at him and he does not look like a tiger. He just he just looks like a weird guy. He's a weird guy with yellow eyes. You don't know much about him because he never talks to anybody. He he just seemed really eager uh, to meet Squad Seventy Seven, and that's all you know about him. Okay. Well, You're stuck in a web of lies. <laughs> I've had some suspicions, but I, I don't I don't see this tiger. I don't understand this. What's going on here? Uh, can I, since they're in the zone of truth, can I say something? Can I ask 111, 112 a question? Yeah. We... Okay, like, did he pass this charisma saving throw? No, um, looks like it. Yeah. But would we know that? He passed the charisma saving throw? Yeah, he, he does got a natural 20 really <laughs> plus a lot yeah oh man so so okay i don't know this my character doesn't know this but you're no. telling me 112 and oscar loke passed this charisma saving throw yeah. that's still oh okay yeah they okay passed. all right so so just to say you there nullianak um who do you serve I serve the greater good of the reconciled dominions. Damn it. I can't. Go squad. 78. And, and who is that Erethemic next to you? Oskalok of the Erethemics. I, I kind of realize what's going on and that uh, they're too powerful for the zone of truth. 
Um, hmm. Okay. What about you, Torabag? Who are you? I mean, not Torabag. I don't know his name. Yeah. He's uh, Terrence. Yeah. So the guy behind you, that that uh, that Richard is saying looks like a tiger. Who is that? Who are you? I'm Terrence. I'm a sorcerer. <laughs> and uh, and um, Ralph, you recognize his voice. Yes. You know, I the do circus, recognize the his voice. Master, yeah. That's why I have my uh, my uh, tentacle whip on standby. I'm just here to talk to my old friend Ralph. Nope. I'm gonna stay hiding in my tree. Hey, Cassius, how did you get out of hell? Did you have to perform some favors? <laughs> You're prodding him now. I have a question. Um, since Zone of Truth didn't seem to work on everybody, and I'm somewhat suspicious as well, can I also cast Zone of Truth to see if it works better this time around? Or what if you, you cast have it on overlapping us? zones? Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can do that. Because so far everybody's saying everybody's on the same team, and I'm suspicious, so I'm thinking something's wrong. Yeah, and we're kind of calling out that people are not who they are in your team, I guess. Well, yeah. if you don't believe us, then cast it on one of us, and we can't lie. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know how the I for, I don't I'm not as familiar with all the the mm, uh, Is casting that a... spell stuff as much like this, but I'd like to. Include as many people as possible. Yeah, I mean, it's a 15 foot radius, so you would be getting uh... Richard and Bentley. Yeah, you could probably get Richard and Bentley, but uh, and then maybe Oskalok. It looks like th that could overlap. Oh, OK, I'll do that. OK, what's your saving throw on that? Well, Prisma 12. 12, Thank you. OK. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, he, I, he's not great at uh, casting spells. I guess um, not. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Give it a whirl. Look. Maybe they'll roll terribly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. All right. Well, I want to go ahead and roll. Oh, well, roll. also, Richard and Bentley have to roll now. I want to roll on D&D D &D Beyond... You, you you can also choose to fail if you wanna if you if you're okay telling the truth you can oh, choose to fail. Of course, that's the whole point. Yeah, Bentley's gonna Bentley's gonna choose to fail. I chose to fail. Okay. And then um can I so try you, one you, other you know option? that they that they they didn't resist the, the zone of truth. Except for Oskalok did resist. Hmm. I know that. Yeah. Pleading the fifth is not an admission of guilt. Okay. But it usually um, is. Do we see the zone of truth or is it invisible? It's invisible. Okay. It's from, from what I remember, I think it's invisible. So do I know that Renfrew casts zone of truth? Uh, make a perception check. All right. Let's see. It perception says you, you are aware of it. Okay, but he's not in it. Yeah. I mean, it, oh, yeah. if you're not in it, maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my so persuasion. Make a perception or an arcana check, whichever. One. Perception. Okay, let's do that. Perception, I roll. Oh, come on. A 14 plus 5, 19. Okay. Yeah, you you uh, you see that uh, Renfrew cast a spell, and okay. it seemed to affect Richard and Bentley and Oskolo. Hmm. And it looks really similar to what uh, Musette just did. Okay. Um,. I, I can walk over to to Bentley and Richard. Okay, and I turn to Renfrew and I say, um, you know, I mean, we have nothing to hide. You can ask us whatever you want. Oh, you go in it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I went close to those two just to be in front of them, just to be in front of the other squad. So, uh, so I don't miss mm. 112 uh, steps out this way. Of course he does. Says, uh, 
What have you done with the wings of Hapexamendios? To me? He's saying that to yeah. me or to all of well, us? Well, to, to, to all, all of you that are in the zone, except for Oskolo. What's your intention with the wings of Hapexamendios? Yeah. Well, you, you, have to answer, to you? you have to answer truthfully. Oh, yeah. Or you can well, I can be deceptive and say that I want to know back. I don't have to answer. Yeah, you don't have to answer. Why do you want to know? Who wants to know? I just asked. I want to know. Yeah, but you ain't even who you say you are. <laughs> I say I am 112 Nullianak. Oh, yeah. Step inside here. Don't resist a spell and prove it. I can see right now that you're not who you say you are. I got these truth glasses on, remember? You, 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 he looks exactly like he would without his glasses on. Yeah, I can see that you're a warming piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I've got okay. intimidation. I, I'm gonna intimidate yeah. him into stepping in. I I I I, I <laughs> answer his question. I say, well, you know what happens when the hand of Apexamendios meets the wings and the heart, right? Then then the reconciliation will be truly complete. No, then Apexamendios will reappear. That's that's that what you're trying to do. All of the all of the dominions. That is that is not for the good of all dominions. Um, that is not true. Um, One god for all, all the Imagica. I, I'm kind of turning to the rest of Squad 78, like, huh, huh, <laughs> like <laughs> I, this guy. He, he doesn't like, really seem to be uh, in. He doesn't seem to be interested in lying to you. Right, right. Um, but but he just did. He said that would that would help the reconciliation, and that's not true. Um, Why do you think that? I mean, hmm. well, I mean, because from, from your perspective, I mean, sure, it would be a reconciliation under one God uh, against everybody's wishes. So uh, but that's I, I not could... really what Jericho's mission statement is, it really? Right, right. It, it, are you is Richard saying that out loud? Yeah, I'm saying that out loud. Is that our okay. mission statement is to help regenerate Hapex Mindios? Because I missed that part. Jericho's mission is to safeguard all the the five dominions. Yeah, so our mission has been to turn against you now because you are going nuts. And I say, Hapex Domendio never intended for the dominions to be reconciled. He's the one who split everything. He's the one who, who killed, tried to kill the goddesses. So... Hapex you know, did not split the dominions. You're a zealot. That's a point of view. Mm. I'm in the circle of truth. <laughs> mm. This is a tricky situation. Um, so I look over at Renfrew. I'm like, so what are you getting out of all this? What do you think? Can't you can't you see the effect of the spells? Right. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Since. So I'm not as um, in depth as you guys are on the on the backstory, so I I was just like, so is this enough for me to kind of get it? I think I'm kind of getting it. Um, so what I'll say, um, this doesn't sound like what Jericho would want as a whole. So um, I'm definitely I'll be like, uh, some something's amiss here. This isn't right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to say, uh, Renfrew, you're in grave danger. The man next to you, which you call Oskalok, is actually Cassius Breyer. And I think we all know who Cassius Breyer is. If yeah. you saw if you saw the transmission of what was going on with the vote uh, that happened in, at the end of season one. Um, <laughs> uh, he... We banished him from hell, and now he's back. And and look de look closer at Oskalok. He is not who he claims to be. Um, you guys are in grave danger. Uh, I have no reason to lie. Oskalok uh, looks around and and says, "This is ridiculous." I look at me. Do I look like Cassius Breyer? And he kind of steps over by one hundred twelve. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to stay right there. Uh, okay. Pageant Storm. I wait. I don't know their name, right? I'm gonna say. Um, so, what is Pageant Storm like? What What does he look like? Just point at him. Oh, Pageant Storm is the is the um, yeah. This guy. What does he look like? Uh, do you want me? It's she. Uh, oh, it's a she. 
Yeah, I can share a picture here. There's Pageant Storm. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, that's awesome. Huh. I I've um, seen that before. Okay, now I'm thinking. I, I said I was going to address her, but I don't know what to ask her, actually. Let me think. Um, instead oh, of doing cool. that, in, instead of doing that, I'll just turn over to where Ralph is and say, Ralph, you said you said you know do you know that that uh yellow eyed man over there R ralph are no, you wait. somewhere where you can even see what's going on he's in the he's garden hiding right? in the tree yeah like as in i didn't want to be seen so you, the deer. So you, yeah, okay i've just tree, yelled then, it out because i heard even, you yeah you can't see what's going on right well but i heard Torabog to talk to him I heard Torabog talk to Ralph and Ralph reply, so Dor I kind of did not reply to anyone. Oh, I thought you said nope, uh, but that's just nope. You did not answer. Okay. And, oh, and shoot. I'm talking to myself. Nope. Right, 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 right. Okay. Ralph is hiding in a tree, watching everything from afar because the original plan was for us to hide okay. and then ambush. <laughs> Understood. So and here's now what I... everybody seems to be stuck in a fucking bubble of truth. All right. <laughs> we ambush them with questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have my tentacle out ready yeah. to strike, Serious. but I am hiding. <laughs> You're badgering um, me, man. So yeah, and Musette is still <clears throat> hiding, and Musette is about like two seconds away from just daggering one twelve <laughs> and what was the other guy? <laughs> And Zoe's still hiding too. Yes, he is. Yeah, I'm pulling up the rear here. I'm yeah. gonna move back to where Richard is, and I'm gonna uh, yell out to Pageant Storm and Renfrew, Renfrew. I'm gonna say, those two guys are not who you think they are. They are Cassius Breyer and the Nullianak who's serving at Peximendios. We killed a dragon on the way here who was the wings, and 112 over there is the hand of the Peximendios. You guys are being tricked. And we need your help because they cannot meet with the heart of Apex Amendios. Otherwise, Apex Amendios will be back. Please believe me. Here, here. Hey. Great. So I'll, I'll listen to that. And um, uh... do I need to do a persuasion check? Oh, oh, oh you're persuading, persuading pageant storm. Yeah, I'm 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 talking to Pageant Storm and yeah, the other you, guy. Yeah, you already My successfully guy. persuaded her that something's not right. So now you're uh, now you're being more specific. So yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so my persuasion check is 14. This is hard. <laughs> Especially when the rest of my team is hiding. <laughs> okay. That can be good later. Mm, that's true. Okay, I guess, uh, you know what? I'm just going to... Fuck it, roll I'm the just, dice. Yeah, I'm just going to do it. Okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do Cloud of Daggers in between um, the guy whose name I can't pronounce. Oh, Oskolok oh. and Oskolok 112? And 112, oh. yeah. That oh. space in between them, okay. Cloud of Daggers, <laughs> right now. Please and All thank right. you. We're engaging. Let's go. Uh, This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Over 50% of the proceeds go to the Texas Children's Cancer Center, where artist Don Bertram volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.clivebarkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Humanoid character artwork for Musette, Chertovir, Zoe, and Ralph by Asia Yordanova. She also created the Unbeheld in the opening title sequence. Jonathan Livingston Seagull artwork by Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. 
Map of the Reconciled Dominions and His Order X by Marco Staines at Mark Stain Art. Jericho Squad intro composition, Cradle of Jersemet, provided by friend of the show, Ben Warren. Additional in-game music by Tabletop Audio. Bentley Widget here, smashing through the fourth wall like the freaking Kool-Aid man to tell you about our friends at Little Spark Films. Imagine you're sitting around the table eating waffles with your friends and they're all talking about this crazy new film they saw on Amazon Prime or Tubi or Plex. So you're like, yeah, it was totally scary. But you haven't seen it. And they can see right through you because you're maybe made out of glass like the Kool-Aid man. Don't be that guy. Go see The Torturer right now. Pause this thing. Watch it and come back. Support Joe and Catalina. Oops, I mean Ralph and Musette. Also, while you're supporting them, you might want to see their Hellbound Laments, short films featuring boxes from the Pyramid Gallery and configuration boxes. You should also check out Catalina's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. Before the fall of Earth, we humanity had only one thing, the power. The power fueled us all to feed, to fuck, to entertain. We skipped work that day to watch some movies. to this what the killer fuck? that used the power somehow to come into our world. I was scared, so I ran. One after one, he took the lives of every human I didn't hate. In my quest for vengeance, I met Rue. I had never met a being like that. Rue hated me. It told me the only way to defeat the Kronos was with his weapon, the Blade of Kronos. In acquiring the weapon, it took something from me. I eventually found the monster, and I didn't care what happened to me. I longed for Hey, handsome. Baby Jesus, don't fuck for no cornbread. Goddamn cranberry son! I stopped caring after he kicked my ass. Eureka! Eureka! Have you ever wanted to visit Fairbanks, Alaska? Catch the Northern Lights, visit Denali National Park, China Hot Springs, or any of Alaska's other scenic destinations? Come stay in our Eureka Airbnb. Use the code BarkerCast and we'll take 10% off your stay. Make sure there are cool Clive Barker decorations, books, and movies. Maybe you can even join us as we record an episode. Another great way to support the Barker cast is go to our Tee Public store and get one of our t-shirts. We've got Jose's Baphomet design, Jericho Squad, uh, Cenobium designs by Nina and Ed Martinez, Marcus's Pinhead design, and our old legacy shirts. Just go to www.teepublic.com slash stores slash BarkerCast. What, wow. and, and Cloud of Daggers just automatically does damage. They don't roll anything. Yeah. So go ahead and roll the damage. Okay, and it's All a right. 44. Okay. I am out of... When I'm a player, this is exactly how I am, too. After a while of, like, back and forth... I we never go anywhere, I feel yeah. like. Okay, yeah. sorry. So, Joe, I need you to keep tabs of this. Four for four is three. Okay, three. Plus one. Four. Plus one. Five. Fuck me. Plus two. Seven. Seven. Seven right? damage? 
Yeah, seven. Okay. That was four times. Okay, I guess the time for negotiations is over. We're done. Hey, who knows? Maybe the Cloud of Daggers will slice off that fake skin off of Oskolo. There we go. That's, yeah, that's why I chose it. So yeah. hopefully we can yeah. just kind of Good thinking. move forward. Okay, everybody roll for initiative. Ho ho! I I've got... For wow. Very nice. Nice. Uh, 22 for Musette, please. Okay. 22 for me as well. I'm going to get a Dang. 17 for Ralph. Oh, where are these numbers when we're fighting? Yeah. <laughs> well, I got a solid 8. Bentley got a 17. Did I hit the right one? Oh, I got a 9. Terrible. You got a 9, yeah. 3. Three. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's I'm the head rolls again. Okay. Yeah, that was old school. So, um, Musette mm -hmm. kind of got a surprise attack at the beginning. Uh, and the, so that was a, that round... That surprise round is over now, because uh, she kind of surprised right. everybody with that. And so now, Chernobyl, you're you're up first. What do you want to do? You just saw a cloud of daggers appear between Oskolok and 112. Right. So I kind of look back, like, okay, looks like we're doing this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to go. Okay, never mind. So this this is not the time for words. This is time for fighting. I am going to. Um, <laughs> I'm going to cast a spell, and I'm going to point that to... I'm going to regret this. I'm going to cast this at um, uh, Cassius Briar. Yeah. Ah, man, I only got one more slot for fourth level spells. I think I will try the Numa bullet at fourth level again, because that oh, wow. seemed to... Okay. Yeah. And, the, so and that's, let's a see. that's a to hit roll, right? Yeah, plus six to hit. Okay, so, so I got 12 plus 6 to hit. That's an 18. That, that hits. Okay. And so now you said, Rob, this is a fourth level spell, so it's 1d10 plus 3 plus 1 dice for every level? Yeah, it's so a 4d10. 4d10. Okay, let's yeah. see. Let's. Dang. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maximum. Okay. Yeah. First one damage is 4. Second one... Damage is a nine, so four and nine, okay. that's 13. Uh, then third die roll, a five. And then the last die roll for damage is a 13. 31? Mm -hmm. Wow. I hit that guy hard. Yeah. Holy I'm pretty mad guy. at him. He tried to kill so, my brother um, and stuff. He, he kind <laughs> of, uh, he kind of, shakes off the some of the ragged skin that's on him and it's definitely Cassius Briar's face you see underneath it. Uh, do you see now? <laughs> do you see? Do you see? All right. Okay. So how do the other members of 78 react to that? He says congratulations. From what you can tell, I mean a turn your turn is only 6 seconds long and everything Everything in, a, in an entire turn for everybody lasts is in six seconds. So yeah. it's it's hard to kind of gauge reactions, but uh, you do see sort of a surprised look on Pageant Storm's face. And and I'm assuming Renfrew. Okay, so I am going to relocate here next to Richard and stay out of his line of fire. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, I kind of look at Pageant Storm and Renfrew like, See? That's Cassius Breyer. He's not Oskalok. Your friend is probably dead, and Cassius Breyer killed him. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah, and, and they, they they have enough time to look surprised. But uh, ne next is Musette's turn. Yeah, because you're right. You're kind of behind 112, so he's, like, turned away from you. Yeah, um, but I got to leave up my, uh, I have to leave up my, uh, it's a concentration spell, oh, yeah. this Cloud of Daggers. Cloud of... I will uh, throw Acid Splash at him okay. at... Uh... 112? Where are you? Oh, shoot, I can do both, actually. If you choose to, they must be within five feet of each other. Yeah, so both Oscar Oak and 112. All wow. right. Oh, I see you there. Yeah, you're standing in the alley between those two. We alleys. are yep, crushing it today. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, and that's a that acid splash is a is a saving throw. Um, say is dexterity fourteen. Okay. All right. So Oskaloke will do dexterity saving throw. Six. So he got he he took the damage and uh, the hand. Fifteen. So I guess he passed. So Oskaloke took the damage. Okay, so I just need two D6 for Oskolo. Yeah. Okay, so six and three, nine total. And and uh, he's pretty hurt already. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I love it. Well, he doesn't have any skin. Yeah. Well, he <laughs> well, does the have fake he, skin. He actually does have skin underneath. He's kind of sliced up by the cloud of daggers, though. Yeah, he's sliced up by the cloud of daggers, and he's and I been, blew uh, a hole in him. With the Numa bullet, yeah, and now he's been hit with acid. You might not okay. have any skin. Uh, Richard, your turn. <laughs> You're up. Uh, Musette, are you going to stay where you are? Yes, I like where okay. I am. Yeah, it's a good place. But I do want to shoot Cassius. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've got a hit. sword. I don't. I don't like him. Let's see. I want to shoot him with my automatic pistol. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna trust D and D Beyond this time. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, I shouldn't. Have. Oh no! Never should. Oh, that's All right, terrible. Let's go for my second yeah. shot. Y- yeah, you my. fire and it it uh, it goes wide. Seventeen. Twenty-two. Oh, the, yeah. Oh. Twenty-two definitely hits. Roll the damage. Four. <laughs> okay. I rolled two ones. Does that does that jam my gun, or is that only on the? Oh hit? no, only for hit to hit, not for damage. So four damage. How you roll two okay. ones? Snake eyes, man. Yeah, you you kind of you kind of clipped his arm. All right. Well, then okay. I want to uh, I want to run back over by this window closer to Renfrew. Okay. And I yeah, yell yeah. over at Renfrew. I'm like, "What are you gonna do? I have to wait for my turn." <laughs> yeah, but like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> okay, uh, you tell Jonathan me. Jonathan is gonna do something Jonathan need. Yeah, he's gonna do chromatic orb at uh, the highest level, at fourth level, on uh, Cassius. Uh, 13 to hit. So that was Jonathan's turn. He's gonna stay where he's at on top of the building. And Bentley. Uh, Bentley is really is looking really really mad. Uh, this is his first time confronting Cassius uh, in person after learning what he did, you know, all the things that he did and that he tricked him. Uh, so he's gonna run right up to him. And, and he le- left him for dead, right, in the water. Um, yeah. Dr- yeah. During and, well, the council. And, and, and you know that he uh, that he he set off that that in the the false hell he set he he sabotaged it so that it would kill an entire squad. Yeah. And Bentley was sort of an unwitting accomplice to that. So he's really angry. He's gonna um, do two. He's going full cool, Wookie. Yeah. He's like, I am done with your shit. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> okay. So um, one is a hit. That's uh, twenty-eight. And damn, eleven is a miss. We're sending him right back to hell. Fifteen damage, mm-hmm. and he's going to use a- his fighter ability action surge to give himself another set of two attacks. Also okay. a hit, so two more hits. Fifteen plus seventeen is at thirty-two damage. So Cassius is looking in really, really bad shape. Um, and Bentley's just kind of sitting there, uh, breathing really ragged and, and screaming and swinging swords around. Is Ralph, you're in a tree. Yes, sorry. He is in a tree. I, he told me what to do, uh, cause he had to run out real fast. He wants to do Eldritch <laughs> Blast at Cassius and one, and 112. Did he climb up to the top of the tree so he could see over the fence? Yes. Okay. All right, I always so thought he... he was at the top of the tree. Sorry. Oh, okay. So that way he could see everything. Because it's okay. Up. Gotcha. Yeah, because I asked him, like, are you up the top of the tree? Or are you just hiding in the tree? Can you see what's going on right really here? 
Okay, so uh, he, he's up at the top of the tree and he's going to shoot Eldritch Blast one at Cassius and one at uh, 112. Is that what yes. Okay. Yeah, one at roll, each. Roll, roll to hit. Okay, roll to hit. <clears throat> oh, shit. One. Natural one? Yep. Oh, one. Yay, we got the chart. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Okay, then he shouldn't have left. Cold snap. You take two cold damage. Ralph does. Okay. Okay, so that's one of them, and it missed. It would have missed either one. Uh, I don't know which one you Okay, were so two damage. Yeah. Okay, done. That was for one, and then I gotta do it again, right? Yeah, roll the hit okay. again. Copy which that. one are you aiming at with this one? Uh, Cassius. I got okay. three, though, so. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a miss. Yeah. Um. All right, is he going to move or stay in the tree where he's at? He's going to stay in the tree. Okay. So now it is the hand of the unbeheld. It's his turn. He's really angry at Jonathan, but I'm not seeing anything that he can do to him from this distance. The reason he doesn't like Jonathan is because when he was disguised as uh, Handy, he got pooped on by Jonathan, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, so for how much damage does he take from the Cloud of Daggers, first of all, uh, music? Cloud of Daggers! Yeah. So two, plus two, is four, plus three, is seven, plus one is eight. Okay. He takes eight damage, and he steps out of this. Five, ten. 15, 20. He's going to go to Chertovir. And he goes past Bentley, so Bentley gets an attack of opportunity. Doesn't he also have to roll his uh, charisma saving throw for entering into the circle? Yeah. Uh, but first, Bentley's going to do a, an attack of opportunity. 17 hits, just barely. 11 damage. So Bentley gets a quick swipe at him as he goes through. Okay, uh, he's going to attack you with his dagger. 28 to hit. And make a constitution saving throw. That's for Chudervir? Yeah. Constitution saving throw. Constitution. Yeah. You, you take five yeah. slashing damage. Oh my god. I got two plus two equals four. Oh, okay, shit, you take... Okay, you take five slashing damage and 19 poison damage. 24. And, and you have the poisoned condition. Okay, that's 24 damage. Yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> now it's Renfrew. What is Renfrew going to do? Mm -hmm. You, uh, Ribbit. Uh, Richard was asking you, what are you going to do? And so now, uh, now it's your turn. You can decide. We're finally here. So you see uh, Oskalok uh, has kind of sloughed off his skin and he looks, you know, he looks like a messy kind of version of Cassius Briar uh, that you've seen on TV. So <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm going to fight. And um, I put Hunter's <clears throat> Mark on Okay. What whatever that guy is again. And um, so also I'm used to um, non I'm used to old school. So doing all of this stuff on the um, screen here, I'm probably not going to really do because <laughs> I wasn't okay. guided on how to do that. Okay. But I want to do Hunter's Mark. On on uh, 112 or on Cassius? 112. Um, and then just use my arrow. So first, first like you have the arrow down. damage, then you have the acid damage, and then you have the Hunter's Mark damage. Wow, oh, that's cool. Yeah, but you have to okay. roll hit first. So I'm doing this. To hit, yeah. So you got a 13 to hit. Yeah, you missed. Okay, you get one more attack. I'll do the same. 29, 29. you got natural 20. Oh, that's, uh, wow. yeah. So you get to double all your, all, you double all your damage. Okay. So I do this one once. Okay. 10, ten, ten damage. Okay, so and then, do I and double then, add, that and then roll, roll 1d6 for the hunter's mark. 
Oh, you're gonna do. So fourteen. Well, that, oh. So, so fourteen a... doubled. Twenty-eight. 28. Okay. Wow. Good math, Joel. Okay, he's got a, an arrow sticking out right in between his shoulder blades. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he can't reach it. <laughs> Okay, uh, and next is Cassius's turn. So he takes his cloud of daggers damage. Yeah, um, can you roll that again? Yeah, 44. Yeah. Okay, three plus two is five, plus two is seven, plus two is nine. Nine. Oh, crap. Okay. He's unconscious. Wow, nice work. Unconscious laying in the cloud of daggers. <laughs> it was going to be his turn next. <laughs> <laughs> Will this be the end of Cassius? And, and uh, Oskolok has to tell the truth. I mean, not Oskolok, I'm sorry, um, 112. Hand him the unbeheld, has to tell the truth. Ralph. Uh, yes, my turn. Yeah, no, it's not your turn. Um, oh. The, the uh, tiger-looking creature um, appears yeah. behind you, and he's holding a, a, a knife to your throat. Oh, and snap. he says, Ralph, you're coming back with me. No! <laughs> Dominate person. So make a wisdom saving throw. Six plus six. Sorry, right, so back. 12. Okay, you, yeah, you failed. So you have to do whatever he says. And he says... Stop what you're doing, and you're coming with me. I guess this means my symbiote uh, whip that my arm is comes back up into normal. So now it, my arm just looks like an arm again. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's his turn. Pageant Storm. Just saw... Uh, that Cassius Breyer had infiltrated the group and is starting to feel like probably 112 knew about that all along. So, let's see. And she hasn't really said anything this whole time. She's just been kind of watching. She's going to run down and just... Uh, she says, you tricked us! And uh, is going to start attacking with her scimitar. Well, she's got two scimitars, actually. 23 to hit, so 9 damage for that first one. That misses, and then she gets one more attack. 24 hits, 12 damage. With uh, flaming damage to the hand of the other guy. Zoe, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move closer to the two fellas down there. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then what I'm going to do is mass healing word because it's got a range of 60 feet. I'm going to go for these two here. Um, is that... Uh... Cher Chervere and Richard. Oh, okay. Okay, so let me go ahead and my cast button. I don't need any help. Oh, uh, well, okay, then I will uncast that one. Well, okay. will it hit you, the bad you, guy so too? Can you reach Bentley? No. Okay. Um, no, it's, it's only 60 feet, and I think this side of this building's in the way. Okay, well, well if... You, if her... Yeah, you, 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 know, you can cast through. Okay, yeah. if, if I can cast through? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anybody well, within that's... sixty feet of you, right? It's uh, yeah. Iron. If I can cast for those two, because it, it's up to um, how many people? I think it's four uh, that I can heal. But no, up to six. Uh, so, okay. who all's in that area that needs uh, hit points? I know Chertebeer does. Bentley is a little hurt. Chertebeer is a uh, lot hurt. Okay, so I will send to those two. All right. Let me hit my. And I think Pageant Storm hasn't taken oh. any damage. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I uh, got half of my hit points right now. 
11. So both of them get 11. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Zoe. You're welcome. I am healed 11 points. Bentley's back up to full. So let's had a plan. <laughs> Chernobyl. It's top of the round. And it's Chernobyl's turn. Okay. What are you, what are you going to do? You got... What the, am I going to do? an aspect of a god in your face. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to hit him with a spell. I am okay. going to cast... Let's see. What can I do here? I would like to do the second level chromatic orb. Let's okay. uh, let's see. Let's roll to hit. And that chromatic orb, it's 20 to hit. Okay. I got 20. Um, I get to choose acid, cold, fire, lightning, poison, or thunder. Let's do poison okay. damage. Okay, so... And now let's see what is going to be the effect. That's a 4d8 for damage. That's 21 points of damage. Use it. You're next. And then Rich will be at, Richard will be after Muse it. Mm, I kind of like where I am still. Okay. Uh, and uh, I do want to keep the those clouds of daggers up. Um, I Cassius. So I was wondering the wand of wonder. Okay. Because it says it's 120 feet. So we should be yeah. I should be good. Uh what is that? Nine oh uh, well, nine and then the ten is what one the ten on the double digits is what? I know that would be it would be nineteen, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you rolled a ten on the hundred dice is a is a one zero would be ten. And oh, then okay. nine would be nineteen. Okay, so yep. yeah, nineteen then. So what's number nineteen on the wand of wonder? Nineteen is gust of wind. Okay. A line of strong wind sixty feet long and ten feet wide blasts in from you in a direction you choose, which is towards the um Nullian Act. Each creature that starts its turn must succeed on a strength saving throw or be pushed fifteen feet away from you. So he's gonna um and it's ten feet wide. So that's going to affect Bentley and Paget Storm and uh, 112 and uh, Chernobyl and Richard, I think. I don't like this wand. Strength saving throws from all of them, right? And and the wand has like a 17 or something for the... Spell save DC is 15. Okay, 15. Two from... uh, So he got pushed... Sorry, okay. gust of wind. So he got slammed into the wall, but first he got slammed into Chertovir. Sorry, Chertovir. <laughs> He'll take six damage, and Chertovir takes six damage also of bludgeoning damage. I stand bludgeoned. H- how many points of damage? Six. Six, okay. And Richard, uh, you got, well, let's see, Bentley got pushed back. And he kind of ran into Pageant Storm. And Pageant Storm went this way. Um, Richard, you got you were already up against a wall. So you take... Um, do I have to roll a saving check? Oh, yeah. You, yeah, you do. Sorry. I forgot. Strength saving throw. 26. Oh, okay. You didn't move. You didn't get hurt. You managed to do... Uh, to hold your ground. So actually, Bentley, I should roll for him too. Bentley didn't make it, and Pageant Storm. Pageant Storm was okay. She she sort of held her ground and got away from uh, Bentley. Okay. And Cassius is still Sorry. unconscious. Yeah, Cassius is still unconscious. Okay. But he's not inside the cloud of daggers anymore. I really right. wish I had known that. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I forgot some of them are concentration spells, but y- you can decide just to just do it one time and let it go. So your cloud of daggers is still up, and you, if you decided not to keep you keep the wind up, you can keep. No, the cloud of fuck daggers. that wind and fuck okay. this wand. I do not like it. Okay. I just accidentally injured everybody. 
Uh-oh. It's okay. Um, we we had a game where somebody accidentally cast a fireball and killed uh, one of our other players. And actually, that was my character that did that. Richard's turn. You got Bentley right in front of you. The hand of the unbeheld is kind of piled up on top of Chertovir. Are they like a tangled mess or what? Or is one on top of the other? Yeah, they're 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 sort of piled on top of each other. Well, I want to run my guy 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 feet over here. Okay. And what's Terry doing with uh with uh Ralph? He get he get if you run past uh past the hand of the envy held, he gets an attack of opportunity. I didn't. I ran past uh, Chertivir. They're they're on top of each other. Rather tangled up. He can't use no opportunity. Yeah, he can. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, my face is a hand. I'll slap you with that. <laughs> All right. Well, he ran past me. Did he uh, opportunistically attack me? He did. With his dagger of venom. Eight. You take eight slashing damage and make a constitution saving throw. Nine constitution saving throw. Okay, then you also take uh, seven poison damage. And total damage? Poisoned. Yeah, and you are poisoned. What's so my total you... damage? So what did I say? Eight slashing damage and seven poison damage? Fifteen. Yeah, and your poison condition. So you have uh, you have dis- disadvantage on attacks and, s- and uh, ability checks. All right. So then I'm going to shoot back at him. Okay. So that was my first shot. Okay. Oh, I'm shooting at disadvantage, so I have to do that. T- well, it does. It already fails. Yeah, yeah. So you don't have to. So. Yeah. So my second shot. That would be my regular second attempt. I'll yeah. have to roll it twice if I hit because. Yeah. Of the you're, poison, you're not feeling good. <laughs> But, I mean, I still failed both missed, times. Yeah. All right. Because I'm poisoned, man. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm trying to pop my spell to unpoison what's going on over here. And he's going to go in here and uh, try to do something to help Ralph. He might be the only one that knows what's going on. Cast like, uh, yes, Mind Sliver. Uh, but it doesn't work. It does no damage. Okay. Bentley going over here he's got advantage hitting uh, hitting this guy but I think that with with Chertovir in the middle of it I think that would kind of negate the advantage because he has to try to be careful not to hit Chertovir so he's going to attack him twice uh, normally one hit and another hit 13 damage plus 15 damage so 28. Uh, Ralph is next. Do so I have Ralph, to? Huh? You have to, you have to do whatever he says. Uh, and he said, he said, stop what you're doing, and you're coming with me. So yeah, right now, I mean, what you can do has to be like, stop what you're doing, and uh, oh, you're coming with me. That's a vague command. Like you would have to actually make it go with you or take it somewhere because it says, you know, you can specify a simple target and general course of action, such as attack that creature, run over there or fetch that object. Come with me. You didn't move. Well, yeah, because he, 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 he cast that spell on his turn. So it's not his turn again yet. Can't do that. I'm just saying that it's a vague. All he said, yeah, just come with me. Stop what you're doing and come with me. And you're coming with me. Can he grab Jonathan and use Jonathan to peck out that dude's eyes? He damaged me. Well, does that fit into stop what you're doing and you're coming with me? He says, okay. uh, uh. I guess I'm screwed. I can't do anything. Uh, 112, or the Hand of the Unbeheld, uh, casts Spirit Guardians. Uh, it basically looks like a whole bunch of righteous circling around him. And uh, they're going to do 3d8 damage to everybody in range. And what's the range? 15 foot radius. All right. 
So everybody in there, and I think that only happens on their turns, right? It doesn't happen right now. All right, so yep, that's uh, that's his turn. He's also gonna get up and kind of move back one here. Uh, actually, he will move one more this way, so he can also get Renfrew. Because Renfrew shot him in the back. Hey, now. Yeah, he, he's, uh, that's it for his turn. Uh, Renfrew is next. So first, I guess, make a wisdom saving throw. So the saving throw is plus one from that, right? So 16? Okay, so you made it. Uh, you take half damage. Half damage? So 11 damage, so you take uh, five. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, so it's your turn. What are you gonna do? Well, I'm assuming I'm very aware that I'm in this ring of Oh yeah, yeah. You're getting death. chewed on by by these uh sickly looking sort of worm creatures that are flying in circles around around uh 112. So I'd like to take a couple steps back from that. Okay. Do I know how to do that? I don't know. Yeah, you should be able to just kind of click on it. Did I do it? Oh yeah. my god, I did it. All right. I'm advancing already. Yeah. Look out. All right. So um, beyond that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, now that he's actually like, <laughs> I was actually really concerned about what I was going to do until he got up and moved. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so now I'm just going to go ahead and, and arrow him again twice. Okay. Uh, Roll to hit. And you've got your hunter's mark on it. I do. That hits. Uh, okay. So do I do the damage on that? Yep, so arrow damage and acid damage and hunter's mark damage. 13? 13. 13. Okay. And do you have one more attack? Yeah, I'm gonna do it again. 15. Now that misses. All right. Uh, Cassius is still in the cloud of daggers. Terence Toraba grabs onto you and casts plane shift to grabs onto Ralph. What does plane shift do? Oh, he is willing because of uh, because of the dominant person. Hmm. Okay, so he takes Ralph and uh, disappears with him. Wait, what? He's, yeah. He took you. He Sorry, dude. You're, you're not kidnapped. Out. Yeah, you you're disappeared. Do we see it happen? Uh, Jonathan did. Pageant Storm's turn. So that's a hit with the flame tongue scimitar. Seventeen. And Pageant Storm is going to take damage from uh, being in the let's see, Wisdom Saving Throw. Has to be to 16. 18. Okay, only half damage. Eight damage. And Zoe, you are next. Okay, I am going to move over here by Richard. Uh, yeah, it's less than five. And then I am going to do Lesser Restoration. It's just a touch spell. And that will unpoison you. All right. Is that one action? Yes. Okay. Okay, so Richard is no longer poisoned. Churdovir. Yes. You're lying on the ground. Uh, 112 got up and got off of you and, and uh, took a couple of steps forward. You have to make a wisdom saving throw because you're because of the the uh, guardians, spirit guardians. Okay, I get a twelve. Okay, that's a failure. Uh oh. Twelve damage from the spirit guardians chewing on you. Okay, I'm down to nineteen points. Uh, but it's your turn. You just, okay. You just you took that damage at the start of your turn, so now. All right. Uh, all right. Yeah. So are these like worms, like do they burrow into me or something? No, they, well, they, they, they look sort of like the righteous, except that they have these kind of gnawing teeth and they just okay. kind of, as they spin circles around the, like piranhas. Gotcha. All right, let's see. Um, how about casting, I mean, I do have my sword I haven't used yet. Uh, I have a cantrip. Can I cast Booming Blade? Yeah. Okay, so I cast Booming Blade. So I brandish my sword, 
and make a melee attack uh, against the Nullianak. I didn't damage, yeah. I didn't hit. Um, Sorry. And now, now it's Musette's turn. Musette, you're not in, in the danger zone, so you don't have to roll wisdom saving throw. Why are y'all all up on top of each other? <laughs> okay, that will just hurt people. Okay, I think I'm just gonna move so I can get... Yeah, that's the closest I can get for right now. So I can see 112 and then acid splash 112. My range is 60 feet on the acid splash. Okay. Dexterity saving throw. Dexterity, yeah. Yeah. So what number do we have to get? 14. Okay, 17. So he passed. And that's a cantrip, right? So he doesn't do any damage if you miss, if if uh, if he fails. Yeah, he passed. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, Richard, what do you want to do? You're no longer poisoned. <laughs> no longer poisoned. Yay. Yeah. Well, what is the yellow circle that's being emanated by one one two? That's the um, spirit guardians. So there's these circling. Um, righteous looking you know worm creatures that are damaging everything that are in that radius so i don't want to enter it cool yeah. all right well then once again i am going to just kind of step over to the side so i'm out of uh zoe's way and i'm going to shoot shoot one one two okay roll to hit 11 no okay. hit and you get one more. Fifteen. Miss. <sighs> Seems like you're getting really bad luck with the with the those dice. The yeah. Dice. Yeah, I know. It is what it is. Yeah. Okay. So two shots. Um, and then Jonathan. Uh, I guess. Seeing what was going on, Jonathan uh, kind of dove into the uh, dove in after, and so he got into the plane shift uh, right before, right when, as it happened, and so Jonathan disappeared as well. So he's gonna he's going to try to try to rescue Ralph. So Ralph, you're gone. So hand of the unbeheld. He's kind of in trouble. He's he's starting to hurt a little bit. He's gonna cast a vampiric touch on Ben. So he just reaches out uh, with his hand. Uh, he uh, 16. Oh, he yeah he hit. Okay. He does 14 damage to Ben. It's uh, Renfrew's turn. All right. So I've been reading up on on my character a little bit more. Um, it looks like. In it, I think, so you get to correct me if I'm wrong. I can do favored foe on 112. There we so go. So I can do Slayer's Prey, favored foe, and my hunter's mark. Okay. <laughs> and that's what I want to do for uh, that, that 112 guy. We need to get him out of here. Okay, so rolling to hit 16. No, he said 17, so you missed. I missed? Dang it. All right, I'll try again. I know, I'm rolling though. 18. Uh, it's a hit. Okay. So the acid arrows do 13. It was the 1d4 he let him in. Oh, and plus d6 for the um, Hunter's Mark. Oh. Um, hunter's Mark is 2. And then... d4 for the favor of the enemy. Yeah. Just remembering it's the triangle. Sorry. <laughs> it's It's 1. <laughs> And then a d6 for the slayer thing. Oh, that's good too. 
six. Oh. Six, nine, ten, twelve. Um, Twenty-two. Twenty-two damage? Yeah. Wow. Pulling out all the stops. Yeah, he's hurt really bad. And, all right. Uh, now it's Pageant Storm's turn. Pageant Storm is not happy about being in this... Um, inside of the... Okay, I think that's a fail, right? I think she has to get a 60. So she takes the, the full... 3d8 damage, 11. So she's gonna move outside of that. No, I'm using the wrong track badge. Okay, here we go. To here. Next to Musette. And she's gonna throw her uh, Revenant double bladed scimitar. And that hits. Well, damage and yeah it goes down so she it's a this scimitar that's got a blade on each end and a handle in the middle and she throws it and it kind of spins like the the weapon on crawl and sticks right into its uh into its chest and the hand of the unbeheld goes down so yeah with that you guys are out of combat yay yeah yay so what do you want to do now I still have to unpoison Chertivir. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Hey, Ryan. We're all, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that we're out of combat or the circle's going down, because I don't... Okay. <laughs> I don't want to walk in there. Yeah, there's there's no more of the spirit guardians. And the okay. truth, it's up to you if you want to keep that. Uh, I don't care. Yeah. Um, okay, Man. so, all right, so I did the lesser restoration on Chertivir, so he should be unpoisoned now. Thank you. So unpoison yourself, sir. I will unpoison myself. Um, I think should be in the conditions, right? Yep, conditions. No longer uh, poisoned. And anybody who wants to make a perception check. Sure. Perception. Yeah. Ooh, not so great for me. <laughs> I 13. rolled an 11. Okay. 14. 11. So with a 14, you notice that... Uh, wh where did Ralph go? Hey, guys, where, where's Ralph and the tiger? Oh. Did anybody see them disappear? The tiger guy, man. Did they go fight somewhere else? Ralph! Figure out. <laughs> I uh, can I sense to see if I can feel Ralph or see him anywhere. Investigation check. Uh, what are you investigating? Uh, where Ralph might have gotten to. Okay. Uh, before before we do that, my thing just now finished rolling. I got a twenty-one, and I was literally right there when he disappeared. Oh. <laughs> oh, you could see him up in the tree. Yeah, I was so. like two. I was like two squares over, so I oh, could have okay. seen something happen. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you. So you know, um, you can tell everybody what happened. Uh, a, a, a pussy absconded with him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's people keep disappearing. We keep getting like members of our squad being kidnapped. Like. Uh, like the seagull first, and now, now, uh, and I, I was the one who was abducted at one point. Uh, didn't Ralph mention knowing that guy or something? He said he was familiar. That was the circus yeah. guy. And, and where is Jonathan? Uh, what, what, where's everybody at? Do, do we run an investigation check? I got my true uh, side eyes on still. Investigating is like, yeah, it's like searching. I mean, you could be... Okay, let's see. I don't know what I'll be able to find, but I've got like a 15 investigation check. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't see him anywhere. Right. I don't see him. Maybe he flew off. He keeps flying off. But uh, 
Yeah. So what happened to Ralph? So someone absconded with him? Um, they were there one second and gone the next. Darn it. All right. Um, can I check? So what? what's going on with... Uh, sorry, I was distracted. What's going on with um, Cassius? Is he unconscious or... Oh, Cassius? Yeah. yeah. He's, he, if you, you go look at him, he's totally dead. He's oh, he's dead? Yeah, he's just cool. Dead. Can I investigate? Can I see what he's got in loot? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you can. Okay, do I, what do I run? Uh, investigation. All right, let's do that again. All right, 21. Um, he has a sword. Uh, it's definitely a magical sword, and you would need to identify it if you want to learn more about what it is. Okay. Um, let's see. He's got a uh, leather armor that is also magic. Mm hmm. Uh, he has a wand. I guess he probably should have used that. <laughs> <laughs> Magic wand, got it. Yeah, he was getting tore up. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't yep. really have much of a chance to do anything. I am in Just... dire need of a better weapon, because uh, I'll tell you, these pistols work pretty good in New York City, but not so much over here. Well, you you have the uh, the Luck Blade Longsword. I do have the Luck Blade Longsword. Who's that dude that's crawling towards me? Oh, it's, it's, it's Cassius. Gotcha. Um... All right, what else does he have? A wand, leather armor that's magic, and a sword that I need to investigate? I have identify. All right. Okay, and I can only do one object at a time. You can cast it as a ritual, though, and that takes 10 minutes. Oh, well, we have it, right? As a ritual, it doesn't use up a spell slot. Okay, yeah. Um, but before I, uh, before I do that, I have a question about, because um, it's been so long since we've played, when I would call my cousin. Yeah, Aldrin. Um, what? Aldrin. Yeah, Aldrin, right. Yeah. yeah, but when I would call my cousin, am I able to do that with Ralph? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, y you don't have to look at a picture of somebody if you know them well enough. You can just imagine them in your mind. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But okay. you, you look at pictures for people that you don't really know that well. Uh, -huh. okay. Well, then I guess the question is, if anyone else has identify, maybe they could do identify while I try to find Ralph. Because yeah. I don't think identify. I can do both at the same time, right? Right. I mean, I don't I have to identify them now. imagine require concentration. Yeah. I think it would be more important uh, to try to contact Ralph. You, you brought up a really good point there, because we can contact other members of our squad. So, yeah, we don't see him, I guess, you know, I find that stuff on Cassius' body, but we're still, like, just got me to the realization that Ralph isn't here, right? So, yeah, I think you should go ahead and try to contact him. But we also still need to identify those objects. Yeah, but we can um, take I'm them with us. I'm afraid, though, that if once I contact, but once I contact Ralph, then we're going to only be focused on Ralph, and then your those objects that you just found, you're never going to... You know, we're never going to well, go back to it, which we, means we're never going to find out what they were. Right. We can take him with us, though, right? We can yes, put him in our inventory and do that later. Or you might contact Ralph and he's like, tells you some stuff. It's like, well, there's not we can do right now. It might be really far away. But yeah, can I'll... I look on the Nolian Act to see if you've got anything? Uh, Yeah. So when you when you look at uh, the the hand of the unbeheld, it's definitely unconscious, um, not dead. It's uh, it's breathing really kind of shallowly right now. Uh, you want to see what it's got? Uh, is that is he's he? I see his chest moving. He's not dead. I'd be very careful. <laughs> also, yeah, why are we not finishing extra the job? Stab here? would be nice. <laughs> yeah. I had an 18 on the investigation for the okay. 112. Yeah. So you found uh, bracers that uh, seem mm -hmm. like they're magic, right? Um, they go over your wrists. 
uh, you found a dagger, and you're pretty sure that's a dagger that makes you get poisoned because you experienced it firsthand. Uh, you found um, ar- armor, uh, that leather armor that looks magic, and another dagger that looks magic. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, so I wrap all that up in a knapsack or whatever, put it in my pockets. Yeah. Tell everybody this guy's got some stuff too. I don't know if you need to identify it, but we'll take it for now. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to add the sword, leather armor, helmet, and magic wand to my inventory. What did the Nullion Egg have? Two, two magic daggers and a what? Bracers and a tunic? Uh, two daggers, leather armor, and bracers. All right, so so are you going to contact, uh, try to contact Ralph? You said? I can. All right. My character will just, I'll throw out a general apology for all of the uh, unknown chaos that just ensued and would be happy to help uh, get Ralph back. You know, welcome to Squad 77. Um, sorry that uh, you guys got, uh, you know, tricked by Cassius. Um, and wh- what were, you, what was your purpose coming here to the Durther City? What were you guys planning to do? Did did Cassius as Oskalos say anything about uh, why you guys were coming here? What what you were supposed to do? Pageant Storm kind of steps up and says. We were to investigate. Uh, It was supposed to be in cooperation with you, but you all shut us down uh, and stopped us from being able to come and help you. With good reason. You guys were carrying a giant Nullianac with you and Cassius Breyer. Um, So I don't know what happened to Oskalos, but I'm going to guess that Cassius killed him to take his skin. So I'm sorry about that. Um, but here's what we know so far uh, is that the there was a dragon on the way here that we killed. It was supposed to be the wings of Apex Amendios. Uh That Nolianak there taking his last gasps is the, the hand of uh, Apex Amendios. And we are supposed to prevent uh, them to meet up with the heart of Apex Amendios, which I'm imagining is going to be somewhere around here. Um, otherwise, the uh, Apex Amendios could return. So we need to stop that from happening. Hand of the Unbeheld, Heart of the Aboriginal, and uh, Wings of Hepexamandios. That's it. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Um, well, obviously, we had no idea that this was happening. Um, I had some idea that something was wrong. I mean, it, things didn't seem right with our squad, but, uh, you know, it's a stressful job. <laughs> I, I don't know. Tell me about it. Just following orders. Yeah. Okay, I am finally uh, contacting Ralph. Ralph, where'd you go? Hello. <laughs> Can you, hello? Can you see anything? No. No, Muset, no, it's dark. I hear, all I can, I can hear things. It's, it sounds like the place, the circus, but I can't see anything. And and none of us can hear this, right? Just no, Muset. Yes. Just me, yeah. I like that I remembered that fact, that little bit, <laughs> but I didn't remember literally anything else. <laughs> sorry. Um No, you you've been great attacking um, monsters and okay, stuff. Okay, sorry. So um is, is Jonathan there it's... with you? Oh wait, I can't he can't talk in the yeah, never mind. Ask him if Jonathan is there with him. Oh, okay. That that's a good idea. Yeah. Did Jonathan go with you? I and haven't you seen the bird. Yeah. Okay, so you can't see anything. I can't see anything. It is just the carnival or circus. I'm pretty certain that's where I'm I'm I'm, I'm at. 
What was the circus name again? He changes the name. I don't know what it's called now. I don't think it matters. <laughs> you can ask if he's hurt. Yeah, ask him if he's blindfolded. He's <laughs> yeah, I probably should ask if he's hurt. Are you hurt? No. Do you know if you're blindfolded? No, I have my eyes. But you still can't see. I can't yeah. see. Did you remember to open your eyes? Yeah, you have to ask Ralph these questions. It is true. What questions? <laughs> Good one. Okay. Well, we're going to try to find you. Okay? Well, thanks, I guess. Take you're not the time. Giving me, you're not giving me much information. Look, the stupid tiger with yellow eyes. It's that guy. Okay. We met him before. Anyway, I don't see anything. He's probably right in front of me listening. Okay. So, uh, you know, hang up, basically. Uh, so, Ralph cannot see anything. He does not know where he is. He does not know where Jonathan is, but he's pretty sure that the yellow tiger guy that went by Terrence, uh, kidnapped him. Could he listen to it? Could he hear anything? Have any he idea where he was? it sounded like a circus. Okay, so circuses. So that doesn't give us much to go by, right? Because circuses could be anywhere. They keep moving around. That's, yeah. I don't know how we're going to be able to locate him. Uh, maybe we're going to have to keep talking to him and see if at some point he manages to see something that could give us a clue. Does uh, the people with uh, 78, did you, do you know where um, Terrence was from? Do you know anything about Terrence? Uh, he kept leaving. Uh, he only showed up, it seemed like, when he felt like it. And he was gone a lot. Uh, he would just go out the door. He didn't teleport or anything he just would leave hmm. and hmm. sometimes be gone for days and then he'd come back uh it seemed like all he really cared about as far as the mission goes was meeting up with your squad uh, with 77 so i think i was i was not here when you guys met the sphinx and all that stuff happened and uh what did the Sphinx, does anybody remember what the Sphinx said about what would happen if the heart of the unbe the aboriginal and the hands of the epic, the unbeheld met with the wings of the unbeheld? Like, did he explain what, what else would happen or where the, or what the heart might be? Cause I don't know anything about, I, I I'm trying to remember cause I saw that episode, but it was over two months ago. Um, Ryan, do you remember anything of that? Like what information the, the squad got about from the yeah, uh, the Sphinx? It, it, um, just that you shouldn't uh, let them meet up. Right, but we didn't have any insight on what the heart was. Yeah, and and there and the um, the order that you should fight them in was the hand, and then the wings, and then the heart. So we did it wrong. <laughs> yeah, but it's I mean it worked right, out. Right, so right. You're, you're still alive. What do I see past Durther City? Is it is it like close to a ocean or something? Uh there there's a, a long road um that they that they came from, you know, the the mm -hmm. Volkswagen bus came from uh and in the direction of of the erasure or, or the former erasure. Mm -hmm. Uh and there that's that's the direction that the ocean is, but you can't see it from here. It's a okay. little ways. Well, how about if, um, since we're all kind of tired and hurt from the fight, what if we decide to make a camp at this city uh, tonight and decide uh, what to do in the morning? Is everybody okay with that? Yes, let's do that. Okay. And, yeah. and I think at, at this point, we were, we'll have, we didn't take a break or anything. We just went straight through and it's already 1230 um, here. 
so it's later for you guys so we should probably uh call it at this point and then we'll kind of pick it up from there all right sounds good Ooh. oh this yeah. was this was fun the the the, you, the you hand guys, was uh, kind of hard you, what kind only a little bit you guys trashed him i thought it was going to be way harder i was worried that you were going to get killed yeah, but it, it felt like uh, I wasn't getting really that much damage in the fight. I was expecting yeah. uh, when we fought Cass Cassius the first time, it was much harder. Yeah, you and know? you're higher level now. Yeah, yeah but that, we had him right. in we had him encircled. That we had him right. Yeah, it was a good trap that we sprung you, on. You guys did a good strategy. Well, I enjoyed this one. This was fun. And, Let's, and uh, con convincing it was really important <laughs> to convince the other members, the other members of Squad Seventy Eight, yeah, to be on your side. Is yeah. that it would have been a completely different fight if they were if you were fighting against them? Yeah, with the whole situation about the zone of truth, I was excited about that. But then I started thinking, wait a minute, what if Cassius passes the the, the saving throw? He can still lie. And then I was like, oh, that's going to be for nothing. Yeah. And then I was, yeah. And then I was like, and that happened. So I was like, oh yeah. I mean, they they could have failed, but they did. Yeah. They had a high uh, high chance of. Passing. Yeah, those guys are high end characters. Yeah. Well, this was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks, thanks for doing this. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you have subscribed. You can find the Clive Barker Podcast wherever you find audio. Show notes for this episode, as well as news and reviews, can be found at our website at www.clivebarkercast.com. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and blog that is not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. You can chat with us on our Facebook BarkerCast listeners group, our Facebook page, Twitter, or our new Discord server. Watch for our annual Kickstarter fundraisers to get some cool stuff, and you can buy t-shirts on our TeePublic store. Go to TeePublic.com and search for BarkerCast. Opening music by Ray Norrish, end credit music by Matt Furness. Thanks for listening.